Hello everyone out there, welcome back to my second video of making a, uh, a private CA in our NSC4 lab, which is a part of our let's make an awesome NSC4 lab to practice in. So uh, once again, last uh, video, we went ahead and promoted our domain controller and configured our enterprise CA, which was kind of cool, but my computer was running so slow that I ran out of time. So uh, I'm going to pick up that video where we left off by binding the SSL TLS to our web server. And we'll talk about why that's important here in just a moment. But just wanted to also apologize for that crappy video. Uh, pretty much, guys, it was this machine on top of my domain controller running updates. So um, that's because I only built this thing a week ago. And I'm like, oh, I need to do my updates. and forgot that window updates take like 20,000 years. But anyways, if you guys look over here, uh, my, my CPU utilization is back down to where it should be, even though I'm running several machines here. Uh, when I record the last video, it's like up to 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. So hopefully things will go a little bit smoother. But uh, let's go ahead and review what we did. So we promoted our, our domain controller to a CA. Uh, so what does this mean? Essentially now we have a certificate authority to start uh, crunching out certs. So we can use these certs to uh, maybe do web pages, user authentication. Uh, we could even use it for like SSL, IPsec tunnel verification. A lot of neat, neat things. So, uh, but before we can do that, we need to make sure that our web enrollment portal is working. So just to show you an example of, of what I'm talking about here, if I go to my my domain controller, so uh, DC1, IT Ninja Lab, it'll probably try to Google the thing. Oh, look at that. Okay. Uh, it did do a redirect to, to HTTPS, and it says, uh, we cannot verify the identity of the server. All right. Let's continue anyways. So here we go. That's what we wanted. So I'm assuming that it's HTTPS. I'm not actually very familiar with... Uh, Opera, one of my coworkers, encouraged me to start trying it out. Uh, so just for giggles, let's use Internet Explorer, <laughs> just for giggles, you know, because that's 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 what makes me giggle. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right, so let's go to uh, HTTPS DC1 IT Ninja dot lab. Right away, it's saying I, it can't even connect to it, and I know that's not true. We were just there, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, I can always type in the IP address. I mean, it's the machine that we're we're on right now. So, let's take a look. Oh my gosh, what a pack of lies! A pack of lies, pack of lies, <laughs> Devin. You told me that if we had a enterprise CA, it'd be trusted automatically throughout our our network. So. All right, well, let's take a look here for just a moment. It's saying that the website has a different web address. All right. And they're saying that because it has a different web address presented on the certificate, that we're getting an error. So let's go ahead and continue to this website. All right. So there it is. And even though we do have a certificate error, it is still performing SSL secure functions all right we don't want certificate errors i'm going to have an entire set of videos i don't care how long it takes i'm going to i'm going to try to find every certificate error that i can i can come up with in the book and try to solve it so cuz a lot of people who take my courses that's one of the biggest things that we battle with right from ssl inspection to even just certifying the admin portals so but the reason why this is happening let's go ahead and take a look at that certificate so when we were setting up the configuration for our, our CA, there came a part in that video when I'm all like, oh, you know, should we just use this for SSL for right now? Should I do there? I kind of like had a squirrel moment. I'm like, all right, forget it. And I just said, uh, um, click it through. We'll do it later. All right. And the reason why is because we are using a certificate, right, private and public key from our CA server itself and not particularly for the website that we are on. So uh, our whole goal here is to make a web server cert that users, including ourselves, because even though we're admins, this, this cert error thing, guys, it's just not, 
it's not cool. Can I say that? Like, we look lame as admins, and we have cert errors, right, in our internal network. So, <laughs> uh, and that's what brings us to our goal in this video. We're going to create a web server cert just for this IIS web server. Okay, guys? Let's do it. Are you guys ready? So, uh, it's been a minute since I've done this, uh, so bear with me. So, but for right away, once again, guys, man, that time, I gotta figure that out. I know probably no one watches these things, but if anyone has a good solution for that, let me know. So, I mean, it is the, it is the fifth, <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. It's really around uh, uh, 242 here in Tempe, Arizona, here we go. All right, I just don't want to crunch out a certain, it won't be good for like, you know, 10 years okay or or five hours okay so here we go guys so to make this happen now we normally just go to uh cert serve all right and it should have us authenticate administrator all right here we go and remember this is what we configured in the last video to have a nice little interface so let's go ahead and request a certificate and let's do an advanced. We're not doing a user cert. And we're going to create and submit a request to this certificate authority that we're on. All right, it's saying, hey, you know this website's trying to crunch out a cert, right? Is that okay? Well, yeah, that's okay because we did it. Now, it's not a user. It's going to be a web server. Isn't that neat? All right, here we go. Are we ready? Let's do this. So the name is going to be uh, dc1.itninja.lab. The email is going to be support at itninja.lab. Now, is it open SSL? I remember back in the day, you couldn't use these add symbols using a command line for one of those, but I'm pretty sure you can do it through here. So I'll just use the add symbol. So company, IT, Ninja, support. Department is gonna be support. I'm in Tempe, Arizona. Arizona, Arizona. There we go. And our country is US. We're gonna create a new key set. It's gonna be 248, right? And, oh, look at that. Only SHA-1. Oh. Oh. Anyways, we'll definitely make these keys. Uh, you know what? We'll just roll with it. We'll just roll with it. Friendly name, we'll just call this uh, DC1 Web Cert. All right, here we go. Yep. All right, here is the cert that you asked for. So we hit install the cert and it says that it did it. Wait, what, seriously? That's it? Well, okay. Uh, how do we check that? Well, if we come over here and we go to file, nope, internet options. And we go to, uh, is it under security, privacy, content, content, certificates. And there she is. What? Oh, that's so cool, guys. That is so cool. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and now bind it to the, to the web server. Wasn't that pretty easy, though, guys? Anyways. And like I said, when I do my, I'm really setting this all up to do a whole series on cert errors. And you'll see me use that uh, several times. So, but now let's go uh, not to the FortiGate. I got a little, little bit of a habit there, so. All right, let's go and go to tools. And we'll go to our IIS manager. All right. So here is our 
web server. Here is our websites. Here's our default website, right? And then we can drop this down even more. You can see how there's, oh, there it is. See the search serve right there? So good stuff there. But right over here where it says bindings, that's where we're going to want to go. And right now, the HTTPS binding, right? If we hit edit, it is bound to that cert that was giving us a cert error, right? But instead, we're going to use the one that we just created. All right? And also, I'll even type in pc1.itninja.lab. Here we go. And then. All right, we cannot verify the identity of the server of dc1.lab due to a certification problem. Okay, okay. The certificate has expired or is not yet valid. <laughs> what? What happened there? Let's see here. All right, valid from... Oh, look at that. Isn't that just crappy? See, I knew I screwed up the time. I wonder if like Windows Server does that when it's generating the certs. Um, Ivan was trying to set the time right. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, that actually had nothing to do with, with my demo here. That had to do with my, I just got done talking about that, didn't I? About the system clock and making sure that it was all correct. I gotta figure out how to fix that. Here we go, we'll make it, we'll make it six o'clock. Shady. All right. Uh, let's try that now. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. There we go. Uh, without a problem. Without a problem. So we're now connected securely to dc1.itninja.lab because we created a web search for it. That's what we just did. Um, and then after that, we went to the IIS server and then we bound that web server certs to the IP address. Now the only reason why it gave me an error to begin with was it, it crunched out the, the cert for a couple of hours ahead of time. I You know what? A little part of me thinks that does, does the Windows CA do that like as a security feature? Like puts it a couple of hours in the future just so it's not like good right away? I'm not quite sure but um, like I said guys it's been a bit uh, my whole focus here is just to get us a, a CA to play with in our NSC4 lab. But the second I set the, the time, right, to to something past 5. Now, if I came back tomorrow or going forward, um, and we can see this by, well, here we go, clicking the details, clicking the certificate, and the dates are okay, and it's good for a year. But if we go to details, it wasn't good until 5. <laughs> p.m. and I, I crunched it here at, at 2.45 but other than that it just worked so um, that was a little too easy uh, you know what guys let's fail let's let's try to fail so here's a uh, support PC and uh, I think this is Bill's computer isn't it let's log into Bill's computer and see if he can get to that website all right ooh looks like Devin's logged in Let's do Bill instead. Hey, Bill. All right, so he logs in. Bada boom, bada bing. Like I said, my time's always off. Uh, I should sync with the domain controller, but anyways, it's past that five o'clock. So, so in theory, right? In theory, uh, because that web server was made by the domain controller, okay? It should automatically be trusted. So should we try it out? Let's try it out. So let's go to uh, HTTPS dc1.itninja.lab. And you know what? It really helps if you put a colon instead of a semicolon to get there. Oh, it did take me there anyways. There we go. Did I get a cert error? Did I get prompted for a cert to be installed? No, 
No, guys, this is the beauty about using a private CA, even within our test environments, to start doing certificates and start practicing those for our exam. Because it's a part of the domain, it's automatically trusted. So when we get to the part where we do deep inspection and we make that FortiGate a CA of our domain controller that's automatically trusted throughout our domain, what? Yeah, exactly. Uh, our, our end users are not going to be as likely to get cert errors. Now there's a whole bunch of catches there, and I'm going to I'm going to save that for that video series, okay? Um, but still, that is freaking cool. So there, and we didn't even fail. What the heck? What the heck? So there you guys go. We just did our next goal, right? So in the next video, we are going to play around with DNS records and then add the uh, DC domain controllers uh, CA cert to the FortiGate so alright guys uh, sorry I always feel like these are just horrible but uh, if anyone does watch these thanks and I'll see you guys in in uh, a little bit